Are we going to survive a week-long 335-mile bike ride? Stay tuned and find out. So we're on day three and I'm learning that not every day is going to be fun like day one and two because day three has not been particularly fun. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence and live amazing. And you really can live amazing in RV life. And this is actually a very special video because we're going to take you with us on a bike ride that we took from Pittsburgh to DC. And we're going to share with you some ideas of how you can combine your passions with RV life. Yeah, you might be into bike riding like we are or car shows like I am. We're going to give you some ideas, but first of all, we're going to share our goals for the bike ride because they were pretty high goals. Number one, we were going to bike 335 miles over a week period, and we have never gone that far. We've never ridden seven days in a row. And in fact, we've never done more than 50 miles in one day. Yeah, our longest ride going into this thing was about 52 miles. And we had never ridden for more than three days in a row. I think our longest weekly mileage leading up to this ride was 150 miles. We were going to be blazing new territory. So let's first of all talk about this bike ride. We were going to be doing the Gapco. It is the Great Allegheny Passage combined with the Chesapeake and Ohio towpath, all total 335 miles. As you can see, these are our bikes. The bikes are Juiced Rip Current S models. They were just flawless. These are electric bikes to help us and really make it fun because we didn't want to kill ourselves out there. Right. One of the questions we often get about e-bikes is how far can you go? Well, we kind of found out. <laughs> exactly. So let's take you through this. Sit back, relax, grab some popcorn because it was a fabulous adventure and I think it will open up new possibilities for you as you're planning RV life or for planning a vacation. So what we did was we did a group bike tour with Bubba's Pampered Peddlers. And this was a group tour of about 31 other cyclists. And basically what Bubba's does is they do everything on this tour so that all you need to do is bike. So that means they're moving your luggage from place to place. They're taking care of most meals. They're planning everything, doing the reservations, staying in hotels, not camping. So that all we had to do was bike. And in fact, they were there supporting us, you yeah. know, with stops during the way for snacks and water and that kind of thing. Yeah, there were SAG stops every day. So let's talk about the challenges. This ride had so many challenges. First of all, Day one and day two were the most difficult. So we were just like, oh my gosh. Now there were lesser options. So our number one goal was we wanted to do the whole thing, but Bubba's did offer shorter options every day. So you don't have to try and kill yourself yeah. to do this. You can do it at your own rate. Day one, you could have done 68 or you could have done 43 or just 18. So let's talk about day one. What was that like? It wasn't hot. It was in the low to mid 70s. So that's the thing about this ride, which is known as Gapco, and it's all bike path. These are reclaimed rail trails. Rail to trail. Yes. yes. You're never on any street riding. And we had some concerns about our bike battery. Yes, we did. We weren't sure because of the pace. I mean, if we would have slowed our pace down, we would have had no problem doing 70. 68 that 70, day. Yeah, 68 on the for day one. In fact, we might have made it, but we got, there was, the last sag was at 52 miles, I think. Mm -hmm. On my battery indicator, I had three bars left. So we probably could have done it, but we had spare batteries. So we had staged batteries at that last sag stop and we went ahead and changed them. We were very happy that we got 52 miles yeah. without any problems. Right. We'd done 68 miles, which I think was like, okay, I can go home now because that was a new personal record for you too, right on yeah. the e-bike. My Strava gave me a trophy. So day two was uh, another sunny, great day. And uh, we were finishing up the Great Allegheny Passage. We actually crossed over what? Well, we crossed over two big landmarks, the Mason-Dixon Line and the Eastern Continental Divide. And that day was 73 miles, and we again uh, switched out our batteries at the last SAG be yep. because we didn't want, you know, we probably could have done it, but we yep. didn't want that stress. The first 20 miles of that 
second day were, were not steep uphill, but they were uphills. Battery usage is just like gasoline or diesel usage in your vehicle. It, the, the harder you push it, the more you're going to use. These bikes have the largest battery available in the production bike. That's right. You know, most e-bikes could not do the rest of the ride, which had, you know, 46, 48 miles tops. And these are probably the only e-bikes that you could find that would certainly. go that far on one charge. Yeah, certainly not at the pace we ride. I mean, we just like, you know, we just like to go faster than maybe some people do. We we were riding uh, 20. 20, 21 miles an hour uphill. But the rest of the week, the remaining five days, there wasn't going to be any ride over like 48 miles. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to lug the spare batteries around anymore, and we didn't need them anymore. So we decided to UPS them. Oh, we're in the town of Cumberland, Maryland, by the way, which is a wonderful, bike-friendly, fun town. So at Cumberland, that is a mile post, if you will. It's the, the gap ends there, and the C&O begins there. So we are on day three and I'm learning that not every day is going to be fun like day one and two because day three has not been particularly fun. So let's talk about day three. So now we're good and tired, but we know we don't have any big miles ahead of us. And remember, every day there's an option. So on day three, there was an option of doing 26 miles or the full 44. And what did you say to me? <laughs> let's do the short. I, I was ready for a short day. Liz talked me into just pushing on and I said, let's do it all. Well, it ended up being the most challenging day. So we get going and it starts to rain. <laughs> yeah. Right. And we get going and we're able to get ahead of the rain. And then uh, it starts to rain a little bit again. Yeah. And we stop at a sag and we have breakfast. And now we realize we're riding kind of in the rain. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. the breakfast took longer than we anticipated. So the rain caught up to us and, and we managed to get ahead of it again. And then, so there it was a tunnel that was under construction and the only way to go around was over. Now, if you think about tunnels, they go through a mountain, right? So the only way to go over would be to go pushing the bike up the mountain and then down. And there was a rough trail. Road. Rocks and roots and, and... Oh, and that's another thing. So these have four inch wide tires. So that was great. We were able to ride part I, of that. I could have ridden the whole thing except for the walking traffic. It was a narrow, it's a single track and there were people walking. And, and when I, we would come up to somebody walking, I would have to get off the bike and, and, and wait for a safe place to get around them and then get back on the bike. But I could have ridden pretty much the entire detour on, on this bike. Well, we were really thankful to have them because not everybody, in fact, most people in the group, there was 31 of us, most people did not have the aggressive fat tires that we had. The other thing was, is that these have a walk mode. So we weren't actually pushing the weight of the bike that much because we had it on walk mode and that helped yep. push it up. Yep. And then of course, we're right in the middle of this detour, pushing it up. It was a mile detour, mile and a half. Mm -hmm. We're at the top pushing it and guess what? It starts to rain again. Oh. There we go. Actually going down was more treacherous than going up. It was not red clay, but, but it was slick. In fact, a very experienced rider in front of us almost went down. Her back wheel stepped out and, and she only saved it because of her riding experience. The reward for that day was we ended up at a really nice B&B &B in Little Orleans, Maryland. So Town Hill B&B &B is wonderful. Welcome to Town Hill, guys. So it was the first hotel built on the National Road for the automobile industry. Oh. So lots and lots of history here. It's 106 years old this year. Look that up. That is a great place to stay for scrumptious food. We had an amazing dinner and an amazing breakfast, and it was a wonderful b and I would have loved to explore it more. I mean, there was nice sitting areas outside and a gazebo and a wonderful view across the road. Mm -hmm. But again, great food. Now, we were burning some calories, so we were we were more than happy to have yeah. some, some delicious food. This place is so well known for the food that the owner has a cookbook that, that you can buy in a gift shop. And she said something like 15,000 cyclists come through every year. The beginning of every day, we had a, a riders meeting and um, day four's ride, riders meeting, we, they sprung this, this <laughs> bit of news on us that was, uh, that was quite, a, quite a bit of a, well, quite a shocker for me and, and for both of us. It was 39.4 <laughs> mile ride today. There are a couple of interesting things that we facts about today's running. I hate that adjective interesting. 
uh, and that is that when we got to Harper's Ferry, the only way into the town from from the trail is to go up a three-story spiral staircase. We were like, what? I mean, surely there had to be another way. Bubba assured us that he did all the research. He's run this ride before. The spiral staircase is the only way. And he said, oh, well, you can get hikers to help you. <laughs> and we were, you know, we we were just floored. We thought, how bad could this staircase be? Well, mm -hmm. how, how bad was it? Well, when we got to it, we thought, oh, that doesn't look so bad. Mistake number one. <laughs> So we decided that, that the two of us could, you know, help each other go up this thing with, with each bike and, and we'll be fine. Right. So I actually said, well, Paul, just walk with me. I'm sure that I can take it and, and use the throttle to go up these metal steps and it won't be a problem. So mistake. The mistake was that, yeah, <laughs> thinking that it was that, easy. That was a big one. The number two mistake was I never took the battery off never took off we had these panniers with you know yeah. so we had you know some weight on it that we could have taken off but we we thought it looked easy so what happened so we both realized that we had bit off a little more than we could chew <sighs> and it was it was a struggle and the rear tire was not getting any traction on the stairs which you know, i should have known better and I don't know how we got through that. It, it was, that was, that, that and the pawpaw tunnel were, were definitely, you yeah. know, some tough points. Now next year, Bubba is not going to do that. He's going to have us ride past Harper's Ferry yeah. and go somewhere so that we don't have to do the staircase. Yeah. We definitely recommend Harper's Ferry. It was a postcard. It's beautiful. There's lots to see there. And there's a place you can park your bike and lock it up and then go up the spiral staircase on foot and see Harper's Ferry. It is a must-see town. If you have any interest in U.S. history, Harper's Ferry is the town that you want to spend some time in. Well, it's day six, and thankfully this is a short day. This is only, a, what, an 11-mile day? How many miles have we done total? 230? 230, so, well, counting today so far, 240. I have what I am calling an exercise hangover. I'm waking up in the morning feeling like I have to be peeled from the bed. I'm just like <laughs> sunk into the bed because my body is so exhausted. We got hit with rain again. It was our last day. We were going to ride into DC 48 miles. We had an option of not doing the whole 48, yeah, but we, actually doing 15. I wanted to go the short route again. <laughs> it was, I mean, we got to the start point and people were changing their plans and saying, I'm not riding this because it was raining. I mean, it was actually raining. Again, I was ready to, to <laughs> wuss out and, and not do the whole thing. I thought, you know, what's the worst that's going to happen? And actually, it was the first 30 minutes was the worst and maybe the last 30 minutes, maybe, you know, not even. It, but most of it, you know, we were kind of dodging the raindrops. Yeah, yeah, we got ahead of it and we had rain gear, so it wasn't, it wasn't horrible. So the CNO, it was a canal tow path. And it was in the mid 1800s when they started it and it went to like 1924. So horses pulled barges. Now it got abandoned and a lot of what we rode by didn't have water, but we got to a section that did have water and they did have boats and that was in Great Falls. And we got to see that. They have operational locks in, in the park in Great Falls. That is an interesting point. Great Falls Park is actually on, is in two states. Uh, Virginia and and Maryland it was 48 miles so it's a good a good ride that we had to do I only like slid just a little on the muddiest part but people with the smaller thinner tires had to get off and walk or go around I mean it there was a definite risk of, of going down on your bike through all that mud there were a few soft spots but it was great to have these four inch tires Yes, and we got the bikes good and muddy, but we hosed them off. Yeah. And, and we did. We got right into D.C. and we could say that we did. And actually, our mileage was not 335. It was 336. And I think it was that detour around yeah. the Paw Paw Tunnel. I think it was. The feeling of accomplishment that I have from that ride, from knowing that I did the whole thing. I mean, aren't you glad you did the oh, whole yeah. thing? Yeah, it reminded me, you know, I ran a few marathons and it was kind of that feeling when we got done. It's like, yes, I finished this thing. It was awesome. And let me tell you, there are so many rides you can do. Now, if you want to do something through Bubba's Pampered Peddlers, we do recommend that. In fact, rides in Colorado, Arizona, Tennessee, 
Florida. He does them all over and it seems like, you know, maybe six a year. So definitely check him out. We'll have a link in the description. Um, but other ideas include, you could go to wine country and you could bike wine country. And if you're not interested in biking, there's other things you can do. You could follow a band. If you have a favorite band, you could just follow them on tour. And then what would you do? One of the things that I thought about doing when I was setting up to become a full-time RVer is I was going to follow the, the NHRA around the country. What is uh, NHRA? I always think hockey when he says that. Drag racing. NHRA, National Hot Rod Association. They have meets all around the country. I think there are 23 of them. I also like car museums and... There's car museums everywhere. Longtime viewers of our channel will know that we've done a couple videos about car museums. So think about your passion and see how you can link it with RV life. Even if it's just looking at lighthouses, you can do travel around lighthouse. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to thank Juiced for providing the bikes for Gapco. We're going to be doing a full review on the bikes, so stay tuned for that. That's going to come out super soon. Yeah, let me just add to that that I was a Juiced customer before we became before I became a YouTuber, and so I bought a Juice at you know full pop. And it was an easy decision for me to reach out to them about sponsoring us for this ride. Right, because it's natural and it's authentic. We never want to talk about a product that we don't use ourselves and that we don't love. And Paul was a Juiced fan for well before we ever did a Juiced review. And yep. we are big fans. They gave us these bikes. And guess what? We are keeping these bikes. We love them. Let us know any ideas that you have for combining RV life with passion. Wake up, sweetie, let's go for a ride. Let's get a 40 miler in.